Jim, our next question sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from David Smith in Frankfort, Kentucky. If that is indeed his real name. What is your opinion through a wrestling fan's eyes? What is your opinion through a wrestling fan? Okay. I'm going to read this as is, although Swami, shut up. I'm going to read this as is. What is your opinion through a wrestling fan's eyes? Does Greg Valentine fall in regards to all-time greats? Uh, now, wh- would that be where does he come in in that in that field, or does he fall off the list? Or I'm not sure about the wording, but Greg, especially for his prime era in the what from early mid seventies to late eighties, was one of the most solid workers in the business. He wasn't an over the top promo personality but he got it from his his father johnny that he was straight ahead and serious um there was a great clip they that went around on twitter here a few days ago while you were hooked up to a machine uh from florida in 76 of him dropping the elbow on the board and breaking the board with the elbow sort of like a karate demonstration but with his elbow drop to show how much force it had and he would just have straight ahead guy like that but he could sell he could work i i I, you know i can't say that honestly greg valentine needs to go on the list you know in between londos and thez and hogan and savage and piper and rock and austin but he drew quite a bit of money and was used quite well for a long period of time and was a, a a great worker. I think he's one of the guys that he did so many indies over the last, I don't know if he's still doing them now, but for 20 years there, you'd see Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake on a lot of indies. And he'd slowed down and he got older and, you know, didn't have the same oomph of his youth, nor do we all, but Maybe that's what some people have seen, and it probably hadn't done him any favors in the way he's remembered. Well, perhaps he needs a better lawyer. Somebody to represent him. That's right. Especially if he's being accused of doing things in places where he wasn't even there. Have you heard about this now? Have you read about this, Brian? Someone has been accused of doing something and being somewhere that they didn't do and weren't at. And guess who has come to the rescue of this incredible young student athlete from the University of Alabama? You know who it is, ladies and gentlemen. Call Stephen P. The rest. Folks, we've told you about how Stephen P. New is bringing down evildoers, whether they on a big scale or a small scale. Everything from protecting this young woman who was an innocent victim of a prevert over there in the West Virginia legislature to filing class action suits against energy companies and major pharmaceutical companies for damaging people. And now he's going back to help out the little guy again. Have you heard about? Kai Spears, Brian, he's a student athlete at the University of Alabama, and his parents are now being represented by the law offices of Stephen P. New, New Taylor and Associates. All everybody's jumping in on this one. Apparently, there was an article in the New York Times from just just a few days, well, yesterday, that is identified. Kai Spears as a person at the scene of a shooting. But according to a statement that Stephen P. New has released, I will read some of this, all is not as it appears. The article in the New York Times dated March 15, 2023, identifying Kai as a fourth person at the scene of a shooting is demonstrably false. As we can demonstrate, Kai was not in the car nor near that vicinity at the time in question. He wasn't even there. It was Owen. And Stephen's statement goes on to say, this irresponsible journalism has harmed Kai and his family, 
as well as the University of Alabama and Marshall University. And I have reached out to general counsel for the New York Times with no response. They're hiding, hiding from Stephen P. New. And again, a statement from the Spears family, Christian Spears, the father, says, I'm furious at the completely erroneous article placing my son in the car at the scene. It is absolutely false. Kai was not there. And I am grateful to the people who are supporting our family. And one of those, the main one, is our legal watchdog himself, Stephen P. New at newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084, who is now going to take down, apparently, the New York Times and whoever demonstrably falsely presented this demonstrably false information. How dare people do such a thing with Stephen P. New on the case, Brian? He'll make them pay. Don't worry. Well, I'm not worried. I'm comfortable about the whole thing. I'm <laughs> <What>? confident. <laughs> I didn't think you were worried necessarily. I'm confident. <laughs> Anytime Stephen takes hold of something, it comes out right. So, folks, if you'd like Stephen to take something, a hold of something for you and make it come out right, Stephen P. New, New Law Office, <laughs> New, New Law, Law Office, Office, yes. NewLawOffice.com, <laughs> 888-692-8084. And, and possibly their Friday is casual day, Monday is nude day, over at the New Law Office. Well, that's right. Stephen P. New, 888-692-8084. Give him a call today. See but he's only going to be naked if you ask him to be. If you ask him to, he'll take his clothes off for the meeting, but otherwise he keeps them on. He is very professional. I assure you he will be fully clothed. Whether you request his nudity or not, he will no, defend he try, you. He always tries to please his clients. He wins for his clients. He fights for his clients. He's a champion of the working man. And that's the working Stephen P. Man. New. That's right. Well, and he'll get naked if you want him to. He will not get naked. Stop he's this. got nothing to hide. He conceals nothing from his clients. He's uh, he's all the way out in the open. He has nothing to hide, but new is not nude, and new is not lewd, and he will not be nude or lewd for you, but he will be winning for you and fighting for you, Stephen Peter. Yes, and he, he has nothing in his pockets. And he'll show you, because he won't have any pockets on. Well, let's move on from here, because it doesn't seem like we can get out of this. A little bit more about Steven at the end of the show. I got another email about this. Here's another email from Rodney Davenport. In the Russ McCullough and Rikishi what? incident, why was McCullough the one that Rikishi and the other Samoan got mad at? My untrained eye <laughs> sees Haku as the botcher. Sorry if you've explained this before. Is this going around or something? Apparently, well, okay, if you're going to get mad at Haku, what are you going to do? You're going to fight him or anybody else on the fucking planet? Yeah, what are you going to do? You're going to fight him or just turn around and beat up Russ McCall? Yeah, I just, hey, fuck <laughs> well, I just got my fucking face smashed in, so I'm just going to beat up this fucking putz over here. 